Hey everyone, welcome to season two, episode three of Ask Say the Podcast. I'm your host, Say Tioko, and today we're gonna talk about love. Have you ever heard people say, I will never get married? Sakit sa ulo yung mga bata. I will never have kids. Men are trash. We pick the bear. We pick the bear. Di ba sa TikTok? It's like, are you gonna choose a bear or a man? And people are all like, we pick the bear. Some people also say, the single life is the best life. I will never get a husband. I will never get married. Never. Relationships are trash. In Tagalog terms naman, we hear people say, manhid na ako or I'm dead inside. Patay na ako sa loob. Wala akong maramdaman. And take note, if you are not watching the video, I am using quotation marks because I know how powerful our words are. Death or life is in the power of the tongue. And that is the main reason why I am so careful about what I say or what I speak over my life and other people's lives. Because, girl, the words are so powerful. But they say thoughts are powerful. What more words? What more words that you speak over your life? Why did I start with these statements? Why? It's because I used to resonate with all of these statements. I used to think that after getting hurt over and over and over again in love, I thought that the best course of action was to live my life alone in semi-isolation and just, you know, have my immediate family around me, but no one else. So I built walls around my life and I never let anyone new in. That was my life before. I was like, yeah, I'm so independent. Kaya ko lahat to, kahit wala, blah, 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 blah. It's like, girl, I was like that before. As in, I was like hyper independent. I was like, I don't need no man. Wala, hindi kailangan ng partner, sakit sa ulo, blah, blah, blah. All of that. And I know a lot of people who are jaded about love. And it's not because of their own fault. It's because of circumstances in their life. Because, di ba, every circumstance we go through, every trauma we go through, all of that play a role in shaping us into the person that we are today in the present moment. I know a lot of people who are jaded about love. I was one of those people. But, you know, we're jaded about love, but we still look for love or intimacy in all the wrong places, in all the wrong people. Man is not meant to be alone. Kaya nga ginawa si Eve, di ba? We are not meant to be alone. We are meant to have relationships in our lifetime. So back then, when I was looking for love in all the wrong places, in all the wrong people, because, you know, something in me, I was craving for that connection, that intimacy, that feeling of someone caring for me, and all of that good stuff. I would go through cycles. And when I say cycles, it's like, you want love. Subconsciously, you're looking for intimacy, you're looking for love. Next step, you look for it in all the wrong places. You go to Poblacion, you get drunk, and then the first guy you see is like, hi, okay, we hit it off, and then we have sex, and then it's a one-night stand, and then the next day it's like, no more communication. This is the toxic cycle that I'm talking about. This is it. It's the cycle that keeps repeating and repeating until you find the source of the one true love that you need in your life. Tramper cycle, pa ulit ulit yan. So it really depends on the person. If you will go through that cycle three times or 158 times, it really depends on you. Let's do a little pause and just maybe ask yourself and be radically honest with yourself right now. How thick is that callus in your heart now? That callus that build it up over the years, making you not want to love people making you not want to let people in, making you not want to believe in love ever, ever again because you've been hurt so many times. Check your heart right now and be very radically honest and say, yes, manhid na ako, wala na ako maramdaman. That's, that's where I am right now. And I think when you become radically honest with yourself, you know, because it's so easy to lie to yourself and to other people, right? But I think the first step to real change is when you take the first step of being radically honest with yourself. Magpakatotoo ka sa sarili mo. And that's gonna open up so many doors for healing and true change. 
Because I also know from experience that it's the people who say that they never want to love again or they never want to open up again, never want to trust anyone again. Those are the same people who need love the most. Our human longing for connection and relationships will never, never, ever go away because we are wired that way. And again, God did not intend for us to be alone in this lifetime. You cannot do it alone. Another thing I wanted to bring up in this episode today is twisted fantasies. It's like you have perverted perceptions of love and actions of what you perceive as love. And this is so, it's so messed up because there are some things in the past that used to turn me on But then when I was able to process it very clearly, it became so evident that I was trying to draw pleasure from something painful that happened in my life. And that's not good. That is not psychologically sound. You know, there's something going on up here if that is what you think or what you perceive to be as love. Now, I don't have all the right psychological terms, but I just know that love and sex was made by God to be this very beautiful thing, this very pure thing shared by husband and wife. And it's not meant to be twisted. It's not meant to be perverted. And we all know, we mentioned this in the previous episode that The devil is the one who perverts anything good. So we aren't surprised that in this day and age, we have a bunch of fantasies, like really twisted, really messed up fantasies that people seek, that people want to give a try. And these are not good. Again, there's something going on up here. If what you perceive to be as love or as pleasure is something so perverted and so twisted and that is not from god now why do you think we all have different perceptions of love number one is upbringing how were you raised who are the people or who were the people who raised you did they portray love well for you while you were growing up a healthy family Dao, is the cornerstone of a healthy society and more importantly a christian family Family is where everything begins. And I am a millennial. I am 33 years old. And ang dami kong kasabayan, ang dami kong ka-age na. We are the generation. You know, we talk about trauma a lot. We talk about dysfunction in the family. We talk about, what did you grow up with? Anong trauma mo sa kabataan mo? Ganyan. Kami yun. Kami yung generation na yun. So when they say that a Christian family is a cornerstone of a healthy society, it means that you... I'm speaking to the husbands, the men. Together with your wife, you and your wife will determine the spiritual climate of your home. We talk about this a lot in like different leadership platforms, right? So how can you lead if you yourself, you are not in order? You don't have things in order in your own life. How can you lead a community? So it's the same with husbands and men. How can you lead your family if you yourself... Your spiritual life is, you know, all over the place. Alala ko dati, we always mention, oh, we want men who can lead. Because yun talaga yung design ni God for men to lead. It's a God-given structure, right? It's a God-given structure. Men are supposed to lead, to provide. They are supposed to be the head. Sila yun eh. Sila yung sobrang, they have to hold the family together. Sila yung nagsistart ng lahat. So the man's first obligation is to get his spiritual life together. How? We talk about this. How do we do that? We read the scripture, stay close to your Bible, we pray, and also we lead by example. Diba? Oftentimes people will not listen to you if you tell them, oh, kailangan gawin mo to, blah, 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 blah. They will not listen to you. But when they see you do it, especially in the family, who you look up to, who children look up to growing up, that is so important. I read this from a Christian article. It says here, most of the responsibility of cultivating a healthy family culture lies on the shoulders of the man. And here you are, girl, going to publish on getting blind drunk every weekend, looking for men in the wrong places. Men who you don't even know if they have a prayer life or if they are a man of God or if they have a relationship with Jesus. What are you doing? 
No, no. Most of the responsibility of cultivating a healthy family culture lies on the shoulders of the man. This is why we need more godly men. We need them in our society, especially in our generation today. What is a man of God? Let's read from our Bible. This is from Ephesians 5 verse 23. A man of God. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership, wives should likewise submit to their husbands. Now, a lot of people take this out of context and say, you're my wife, you have to submit to me. The Bible said that. Girl, no. First of all, who are you submitting to? Are you submitting to the world or are you submitting to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior? Read the Bible. Don't take it out of context. You have to read it. That's what a man of God is, according to Ephesians 5, verse 23. Another verse is from 1 Timothy 3, verse 5. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? The man and the wife, they have to have this full partnership to achieve harmony and fellowship in the family. Again, this is a God-given structure that has to be followed. The home should be a place of love, prayer and worship, and teaching of the gospel. Parents should be very mindful that they are upholding biblical principles in the home. I know that we all know that it's during the formative years of children that so many things are shaped. Diba? And where do they spend their time the most growing up? At home, right? The home has to be a place where every child is safe and feels safe. I am speaking from experience. What you see growing up, it's going to come out in your adulthood. What we see, we store somewhere in the back of our minds. And it comes out as behaviors towards other people in our later years and during our adult years. My question is for the parents who are listening right now. I know I'm not a parent, but this is just a thought to ponder on. How are you affecting your children? How are you and your husband affecting your children? Do they feel safe? Do they feel like they can come to you anytime and ask for your advice and all of that? Or is there chaos in your house? Is there always shouting? Nagmumurahan kayo sa harap ng mga anak ninyo? What is it? I hope it's not the latter because I definitely know how that feels and how it affected me as an individual. I super understand now why we have to protect the children because they're the most vulnerable members of the society. And as a church, we have to protect these children from everything that is, you know, sent out to destroy them, destroy their futures. These are children of God. We are children of God. We have to protect the most vulnerable. Do your children see a healthy kind of love between you and your husband? Husbands, do you love your wife in front of your kids? Do, do you show them how much you love their mother? Or do your kids see you being unfaithful, being mean, being cruel to each other? Again, what they see, they will store somewhere in the back of their minds. And in the near future, there's a huge chance they're going to repeat that same behavior because, again, it shapes it. It shapes their perception of love. Satan knows that if he can destroy families, he starts there. If he can destroy that, he can destroy communities. And then he can destroy whole nations, whole lineages and generations of people just to thwart the will of the Lord. And we are not going to let that happen. When did this all begin? This familial breakdown. It began with Adam and Eve. When they ate the apple, kay sabi ni God, niya, girl. So they were separated from God. But apart from that, they were also separated from each other. The perfect unity that Adam and Eve had, that they previously shared, they were separated from that. And on next na familial violence in the Bible, it was when Cain murdered Abel. 
That's the second one, right? And then it continued down because, again, we are in a fallen world. It continued down and until this very moment, we still experience it today. We still experience familial breakdown in the form of divorces, domestic abuse, fatherlessness, and all of the bad stuff that you can think of. We still experience it today. Now let's talk about trauma. I know people don't want to talk about trauma. Hello, it's so it's so heavy, but it's something we need to talk about and we need to face this. The second reason why some people have a very skewed perception of love is because they have been abused. They have been sexually abused. They have been assaulted and all of these things. No one deserves any of these things. I saw a TikTok video one time and it said there, why do I have to heal from the things that I did not do or I did not deserve? And the short answer is we live in a fallen world. This world we have right now, it's not heaven. It's not. We live in a fallen world and some places and people here are controlled by the darkness. And that is a fact. That is a fact. And this is more reason why we have to stay close to the light. We have to stay close to Jesus, to God. The results of trauma and abuse are unresolved and pent up anger, resentment, unforgiveness, mistrust, and all the things that make you manhid. When you say now, ah, I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. It's your way of subconsciously letting people know that I have a stone of heart. I cannot. I cannot trust you. I cannot let you in. I will stay here in my cage because I've been traumatized. And that is so valid. That is so valid. In my own experience, I think the route that I chose before was to be over-sexual. Because being overly sexual is to feign being in control. Because when you were abused before, you weren't in control, right? So there are two ways now, two routes that people who have been abused go to. So it's either hypersexuality, which is a way to regain a sense of control over their bodies and experiences to numb pain or emotions. Yung ibang people naman, they go to the other extreme, which is build up super high walls and never ever let anyone in, never ever trust anyone else ever again. So it's like extremes. And I believe Phoebe, my friend Phoebe, when she interviewed me for my testimonial in her podcast, which I will link in the description below, she mentioned this, she mentioned this. And it all makes sense. Like, why was I being so hypersexual before? Why? What was the deeper subconscious meaning behind this behavior? Because believe it or not, everything that you show outwardly, there's something going on inside. There's a psychological explanation for every behavior. Do you know who wants you to mistrust? Who wants you to build walls? Who wants you to isolate? Satan does. He wants you alone. He wants you to isolate, to build that heart of stone, a sobrang kapal na ng kalo sa heart mo. He wants that. He delights in that. You know why? Because it's when you are isolated that he can attack you more. He can make you think that you are never good enough. No one will ever love you because you did this or this happened to you. No one will ever love you because you are this and you are that. All of that bad stuff. That's why we have suicidal thoughts. We have all of these thoughts of like hopelessness and sadness, loneliness. All of that comes from Satan. And it's when you isolate that you are most vulnerable. So that's why do not isolate. And again, I'm speaking from experience. I also went that route of being, you know, of one thing to be alone forever in my life to just isolate. Because that way, everything is peaceful. Nothing's going to go wrong. But that is not the way God designed life to be. God designed life for us to be in fellowship with other believers, to be in fellowship with people, to build relationships, to grow in faith with other people. That's how God wants you to live. The only solution to these societal issues, all of this, everything we talked about today, is for everyone, all of us, all of us, to come to a saving knowledge of Christ 
of Jesus Christ and allow him to transform your families for the glory of God. You might ask me, pero si, ang sakit, ang sakit nito. This happened to me, this happened to me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that happened to you. But I'm telling you right now that there is an answer. There is an answer. There is someone out there who will heal all of your wounds as if nothing ever happened, who will heal all of that hurt, that resentment in your heart. And his name is Jesus Christ. It makes me emotional because I went through it. And I know how amazing Jesus' love is. And I just want everyone to, to experience his mercy, his grace, his love for you. He is amazing. He works everything for the good. To close this episode, I want to remind you that God sees your grief and your hurt, and he will bring you comfort. Psalm 147 verse 3, he heals the heartbroken and bandages their wounds. Revelation 21 verse 4, he'll wipe every tear from their eyes. Death is gone for good. Tears gone, crying gone, pain gone. Reminding you that God is in control. Even when you feel like things are out of control, he is always in control. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. God is striding ahead of you. He's right there with you. He won't let you down. He won't leave you. Don't be intimidated. Don't worry. Reminding you that all of the suffering you go through in this life can be used for his glory. If you allow him to, he's going to turn everything for the good. Isaiah 61, the spirit of God, the master is on me because God anointed me. He sent me to preach good news to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, announce freedom to all the captives, pardon all prisoners. God sent me to announce a year of his grace, a celebration of God's destruction of our enemies, and to comfort all who mourn, to care for the needs of all who mourn in Zion, Give them bouquets of roses instead of ashes, messages of joy instead of news of doom, a praising heart instead of a languid spirit. Romans 8 verse 26 to 28. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's spirit is right alongside helping us along. If we don't know what to pray or how to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our worldless sighs and our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves, knows our pregnant condition and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. Every detail. Isaiah 40 verse 31, but those who wait upon God get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. My friends, God is good. God is still good, even in the midst of pain. And what we have to do is to fully trust, fully surrender, and just let everything go. Let all the bad stuff go. Let all the anger, resentment, rage, unforgiveness, let all of that go because it is hindering you from reaching your full potential as a child of God. It is hindering you from getting closer to God because God is love, right? God is love and he wants us to experience this kind of love, this ultimate, this ultimate version of love that only you can find in jesus christ you can see that love when jesus died on a cross for us that is the ultimate love and in the previous episode i mentioned that the standard now is how jesus loves his church that is what we always should be looking to we have to keep our focus on jesus and we just have to stay close to people who show us this kind of love be it in friendships in romantic relationships, in the family. We always have to strive to cultivate this type of love. And all the other types of love, these are all counterfeit. Do not even entertain any of them. Do not, because it's it's a slippery slope and you will find yourself hurt over and over and over again. God's love is something that I experienced in my rock bottom. I've had so many rock bottoms and it is only God's love that will renew you, renew your mind, your spirit, your body. And it says in the Bible, it, 
it makes you white as snow. God's love, the blood of Jesus, what he did on the cross for us, he wipes us clean, sobrang clean slate, as if nothing ever happened to you in the past. He took on all of our sins. Jesus paid the ultimate price in order for us to be reconciled with God. And what a beautiful display of love. The ultimate, the ultimate kind of love. Before I go, I want to remind everyone out there who is currently hurting and feeling all of that burden of all of the abuse, all of the trauma in your heart. Please allow Jesus to enter your life and enter your heart. And I promise you, this is a guarantee. This is a guarantee. He will change your life. And I know because he changed mine. My life, along with multiple other people out there in the world, is evidence that our God, the God we serve, He is here to make us whole again. He is here to heal us completely from everything that broke us in this fallen world. Just give it a try. Build a relationship or start a relationship with Jesus. He is the sweetest man ever. And He is the best man that you can ever allow into your life because... Oh, Jesus Christ, I love him. I love him so much. And he is my Lord and my Savior. And I really, really, really invite you and urge you to invite him into your life and build this relationship and just watch. Watch as he changes your life. Everything about your life, he will change all of it. Guaranteed. You just listened to episode three of Ask Say the Podcast. And this is Say Tioko signing off. <laughs>